Hello, and welcome to the first pre-alpha preview of The Time Flight Zone. We've been playing around with lots of ideas since we finished Paranautical Activity, and we're finally starting to make some progress on a project we're really excited about. Time Flight Zone is a co-op first-person shooter in the vein of Time Splitters and Left 4 Dead, but with the crazy fast-paced combat of classic FPS games. The project is still in very early stages, but we've got some cool stuff implemented already. The first and currently only weapon we have implemented is the shotgun. The weapon's simple model is a holdover from an art style we were trying out before we decided on this cel-shaded look. Its functionality, however, is more representative of what we're trying to do. It shoots a spread of 24 shots. There's no such thing as a hitscan bullet in Time Fight Zone, so even weapons that shoot bullets like the shotgun have a slight travel time. This has three purposes. Firstly, it prevents enemies from hitting players with attacks they cannot avoid. Some bullets won't feasibly be dodgeable by movement alone, but with a combination of telegraphing enemy animations and the travel time of shots, you should be able to at least have time to get to cover. Secondly, it makes shooting more interesting for the player. Leading your shots for far away, fast moving enemies is something you have to do to differing degrees depending on your weapon's shot speed. Third, and most importantly, it allows us to make bullets look cool while they fly through the air. Time Fight Zone is a very movement focused game. You can bunny hop to move faster, and most enemies are designed around forcing the player to move carefully and quickly. This extends even to weapons. When you shoot your weapon, your whole body gets pushed backwards based on the kick of that particular weapon. The shotgun is powerful enough to push the player backwards even when they're already running at full speed. Firing down and jumping allows you to jump higher than usual, and firing down mid-jump can slightly extend your jump or push you towards a nearby platform. Knockback can even be used as a dodge move to avoid enemy attacks or quickly get into cover. The first and currently only enemy we have implemented is Tallboy. Aside from his insanely imaginative and creative name, he boasts a simple but interesting set of attacks. He will constantly rush at the player until he gets close enough to execute one of his main attacks. His two main attacks are sprays of damaging acid breath junk. When the player is above or below Tallboy, he will do a vertical spray. Spraying from nearly straight down to straight up with slight rotational correction to try and face the player. This attack is best dodged by sidestepping. When the player is on level ground with Tallboy, he will randomize between his vertical attack and a horizontal version. The horizontal version is a lot harder to avoid because Tallboy simultaneously sweeps his head horizontally and rotates his whole body to face the player. Sometimes, this attack can be dodged by moving away, but usually you'll need to run right to avoid the attack while running towards Tallboy to counteract the combined speed at which he is rotating. Tallboy's final attack is a simple kick, which he will only do when the player is standing in very close proximity to him. The only way to avoid this attack is to back away from Tallboy, as his rotational correction during this attack is faster than your ability to strafe around him. We're using ragdolls for when enemies die. Right now they're horribly broken, and the more I fix them, the worse they get. You'll have to use your imagination for now. Time Fight Zone boasts a cell shaded art style. We're using modular assets to make the levels easier and faster to make and edit. And while most of the assets in the game are placeholders at the moment, the visual style is starting to come together. The shader we're using to achieve this look is a slight variation on Unity's built-in Tune Shader. I'm not going to go into the specifics of my modifications on the Tune Shader in this video, since a lot of the functionality is still up in the air, and it's complicated enough to maybe justify its own video on shading. I will, however, briefly explain how cell shading, at least how we did it, differs from traditional shading. In a traditional shading model, objects are shaded linearly based on their distance to the light source. The greater the distance between the object and the light source, the less the light affects that object. This creates a very smooth and realistic lighting gradient. An object twice as far away from a light source will be half as bright. Three times as far away will be a third as bright, and so on until the extent of the light's reach is met. In the type of cell shading Time Fight Zone uses, we override this linear light falloff using a lighting ramp. A lighting ramp is simply an image that uses a grayscale gradient to define how light attenuation should work. The shader chooses a pixel from left to right based on how close the object is to the light, and how white that pixel is determines how much the object is affected by the light. This allows us to create hard lines of shading rather than a smooth gradient to simulate how hand-drawn or cartoon art is shaded with only a few light levels. To better illustrate the difference between cell shading and traditional shading, if you were to use a lighting ramp like this to simulate more realistic lighting, it would look something like this. Sometimes enemies will spawn in view of the player in Time Fight Zone, so we needed a visual effect so enemies weren't just snapping into existence. We tried for a long time to think of and create a particle effect for this, but we couldn't come up with anything that looked good and sufficiently masked the enemy's appearance. 
The effect that we settled on is inspired by the effect of enemies burning away to ash in Serious Sam, but in reverse. Enemies dissolve into existence in a way that's really hard to describe in any way other than to say it's like they're made of burning paper, but in reverse and without the fire. Regardless of how you want to describe it, the effect looks pretty good and accomplishes the goal of making enemy spawning look cool rather than jarring. I would describe in detail how I achieved this effect, but I don't fully understand it myself and definitely can't think of how to put it into words. There's this noise texture and a slider and some shader function called clip. We put a link to the freely available shader we found on the Unity Wiki in the description. They don't include the mask texture, but any old Perlin noise texture or Photoshop rendered clouds will work to accomplish this simple dissolving or undissolving effect. On the netcode side of things, basic co-op functionality is working. We have a simple menu and lobby system set up for joining and playing games online, and level and player synchronization is working. You can join a lobby, chat with other people in the lobby, launch into a level, and watch each other run and jump around. I used Quill 18's excellent Photon Unity networking tutorials to wrap my mind around netcode. You can find a link to those in the description. Thanks for watching. If you want to keep up to date on Time Fight Zone developments, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel right here, or check out our devlog at CodeAvarice.com. You can find Code Avarice on Twitter at CodeAvarice, the extremely talented artist responsible for everything you've seen today at Belissa3x3x3, and myself at ScooterW. I'll see you next time.